We've got two bits of news to talk about today. Uh, first thing I want to discuss is John Hankey's blog post on the Pokemon Go blog that addresses the issues at Pokemon Go Fest. The blog um, was actually done at, on the 25th of July, but I wanted to wait until I had a bit more information. I didn't go, I didn't know anyone personally who went, so I was listening to uh, YouTube. And today I heard an interesting podcast called It's Super Effective, which covers everything Pokemon related, so not just Pokemon Go, but Pokemon Sun and Moon and other Pokemon news. So um, listening to that podcast was really interesting in regards to Pokemon Go Fest because two of the guys on that um, podcast were there and they were having different experiences with different city and network carriers. So it's really good to get some first hand feedback of what was actually going on on the floor there. So I'm just going to read excerpts from the blog post. I'll put a link in the description and if you want to hear some more in-depth discussion on it, that podcast, they read it out word for word and discussed their own experiences of it. But I'm just going to take some excerpts and discuss yeah, my basic understanding of it. So it mentions that at GoFest they encountered software and network problems that prevented people being able to connect to the game. While our technical team worked diligently with our event vendor and telecommunications company to attempt to resolve the issues, I spent nearly the entire day talking face to face with attendees. So did much of the team of Niantic staff who came to Chicago to support the event. He then went on to say some were able to play more normally, but more on that later. Okay, so after a bit of talk about how positive most people's experience in, of Pokemon Go is in general, uh, John goes on to say, what happened? Technical issues with our game software caused client crashes and interfered with gameplay for some users. The gameplay issue was resolved with a server configuration change and the crashes were also addressed for many but not all the users. A more, sorry, a more protracted problem was caused by oversaturation of the mobile data networks by of some network providers. This called this caused many attendees to be unable to access Pokemon Go or other internet services. Network congestion also led to a login issue which affected some users to users able to access the internet. This latency related login issue was addressed with a second Niantic configuration change. So according to the guys from It's Super Effective, the login issue only lasted for about 25 to 30 minutes. Then the issue became not about not being able to log in, but about being not able to play once they're logged in. And John Hankey goes on to say, On a pure network access issue, we provided detailed estimates on attendance and required data throughput per user to our event partner, who worked with major carriers to allow them to plan for adequate, adequate coverage. Some carriers deployed cellular on wheels, or cows, to extend their capacity. In other cases, the providers deemed them unnecessary based on other infrastructure already in place at the site. Users reported different levels of success with these providers. Wi-Fi was enabled by one provider as a solution which helped some users but not all. 
Brent was on site as an official partner, deployed a cow, and their network was busy but held up well. So as far as we know, Sprint was the only provider who provided cows, and AT&T provided Wi-Fi. One of the guys on the podcast was with AT&T and was using their Wi-Fi, and could play quite well after the login issue was sorted. But apparently that Wi-Fi only covered a very small portion of the park. So, um... It would suggest to me that if you're within the Wi-Fi area and the game's working and you step outside the Wi-Fi area and the game's not working properly, the issue possibly isn't so much with the game. So I know there's a lot of back and forth as to, oh, well, they should have not had the server issues in the first place and all the rest of it. But if that's only you know, 25 to 30 minutes worth of issues and the rest of the time you're still having problems but not when you're in Wi-Fi I think the backlash against Niantic is possibly a bit over the top obviously at the time people didn't know what was going on and Niantic were the front and were the ones putting on the event so they're going to get the backlash so Niantic goes on to describe you know, how they recompensated the people involved and he says We also released the unique Pokemon spawning at the event to the surrounding neighbourhoods to give people a way to catch them where the mobile network was stronger. Later that in the afternoon we announced the winner of the challenge and let players know that all attendees would receive legendary Pokemon in their account. In the early evening, as part of the planned gameplay update for all trainers globally, we released the legendary Pokemon Articuno and Lugia to spawn in a broader area around downtown Chicago and around the world. So players did receive the experience of catching special event Pokemon and legendary raids once they left the park. So they still had access to these, it just wasn't within the confines of the park. But by going to Pokemon Go Fest, once they left the park, went out and played, they still got that experience. We will be incorporating all of our learnings into the Pokemon Go events plan for later this summer in Yokohama, Japan and across Europe and as I mentioned in my last post that the Europe ones, some of them have been delayed or postponed because presumably they're working on these issues. Then the last uh, paragraph on there is quite interesting to me because the whole point of Pokemon Go is it's a real world experience and if you know, you don't have these sorts of issues or minimal amount of issues. It's really exciting to be able to be part of these sorts of events. Um, uh, on the Niantic blog, John Hankey says, Real world events are core to the Niantic mission of exploration, exercise and social interaction. We've been doing events since the early days of Ingress 2012. Those events grew progressively larger over time, starting with a few dozen attendees and growing to over 10,000 in Tokyo last summer. At each stage of growth, we encountered challenges and each time we overcame them, we gained new skills and pioneered new techniques for building real world experiences that support our mission. Last Saturday was not a happy day for us but we are committed to listening to the feedback, however harsh, to improve what we can do so we can continue to build experiences that bring people, uh, bring together people, technology, and the real world in innovative ways. So hopefully <laughs> this hasn't put them off by the looks of it and they've got a very positive attitude and determined that this is the way 
Pokemon Go should be played. And we can look forward to more real world um, interactions and events with Pokemon Go. So the second piece of news I want to discuss is actually a lawsuit brought up um, against Niantic because of the issues at Pokemon Go. This is another thing that was mentioned in this podcast. Um, it's super effective. So to me it seems like a waste of time lawsuit. There's just the little bit I've read about it on this article, which I'll also link in the description, seems so flawed, so ridiculous. And again, the podcast goes into a lot more depth um, with people with experience on these things. So I'd definitely, if you want to have another view on it, I'd definitely suggest listening to that. But this um, lawsuit is a case brought by a Californian man who went to the Go Fest and interestingly enough um, one of the guys on the podcast said because this is referred to as a oh, what do they call it the type of lawsuit that involves a lot of different people um, lawsuits like this are very American that's why I don't know the names of these sorts of things um, Oh, a class action lawsuit so they were talking about on the podcast that oh I bet the people behind this class action lawsuit are probably all from California because it's a very litigious state and interestingly enough the man who started it was from California according to this and it says according to the lawsuit Best attendees, many of whom, like the plaintiff, travelled to Chicago from other states or countries, had the reasonable expectation of arriving at Grand Park, Grand Park for, the, for a day of capturing rare 3D monsters with their friends, family and so-called Pokemon Go trainers. But the relative, reality of the fest fell flat in comparison to the defendant's promises. Also says, upon reaching Grand Park, fest attendees encountered a three mile line and unplayable game. So first of all mentions 3D monsters. I don't know where that promise came from because it was all still going to be on the phone unless they're talking about, oh yeah, in the ad it shows what it might be like if you use your imagination and these gyms were real or whatever. That's, that's how they promoted Pokemon Go when it started. Surely they didn't actually think there was going to be 3D monsters. I don't think the lawyers who wrote this up know anything about Pokemon or Pokemon Go Fest. And the point that um, it was a three mile line <laughs> yes maybe they could have prepared better for the numbers that they were expecting and reduced the lines but events have long lines I've never heard anyone suing Disney because Disneyland has long lines and they're famous for them taking six hours to get to a ride it happens no, I don't think you can sue for that somehow even in America, as far as I know. Um, and the note that it was an unplayable game, well, they created fixes for the server side things, as we said in the previous piece of news. And it was extended to a two mile radius around Grand Park. And once people moved out into that two mile radius, it was playable. So yeah, right there in the park, maybe it wasn't playable, but it didn't stop you playing it. You had the opportunity to leave the park and play with a lot of other people. You weren't suddenly all by yourself out there. It doesn't even matter. The next part says, fest goers were unable to enter earlier, complete timed in-game challenges 
to collect special rewards, collect previously unavailable or rare Pokemon, and compete against other trainers in the game. Well, they were able to get the rare or unavailable Pokemon. They just had to go outside the gate. So, that's wrong. And I don't recall any promises saying that you will be able to compete against other trainers in the game. The whole thing, the whole premise and promotion was about working together, coming together, fighting the raid bosses, or working together to get a large amount of Pokemon to get release um, rewards for the entire world. It was all working together. There was nothing promoted about battling or um, competing against other trainers. So, they, I don't know what that was about or it sounds to me like they're grasping at straws trying to get money. I know people were upset, but I don't think they were upset to the point of needing to sue someone. They did get $100 poke with a poke coins, and yeah, you can't pay back your bills with $100 worth of poke coins. But you've already, you know, like these guys on the podcast were saying, if you go to a concert, pay for tickets to go to a concert and buy travel and go to a hotel, etc., and something horrendous happens and the concert doesn't go ahead, they refund your money for their ticket. Nobody's ever sued a concert for, at least as far as I know, and definitely never successfully sued a concert for the cost of travel, etc. You still got to go to the new place and stay in a hotel, whether you did it for Pokemon Go Fest or not, whatever. I just think, yeah, I don't think it's worth and the problem with things like this, and I find that one thing I don't like about the whole let sue system is it puts people off doing anything. Why would another um, developer come into this sort of industry and go, this is a great idea, let's see if we can get it right, let's try this. Why would you risk trying anything? Because if you get it wrong, something goes wrong you could be sued it could be a class action suit it could be you know thousands of people wanting their cut from you especially if you're a smaller company building up although they probably won't bother suing a smaller company because you might be able to give them enough money but it just to me seems like a waste of time energy resources and why would you risk putting off, if you like the game enough to go to a Pokemon Go Fest, why would you then turn around and say, don't take these risks ever again, because we're going to come for you. So there's my take on those two pieces of news. Um, I personally will be quite happy for Niantic to try something in New Zealand, set up a some sort of Pokemon Go Fest or event in New Zealand. We'll see how we go over here and see. You won't get sued in New Zealand. We're not, um, no, I don't think you even have the ability to sue for most things in New Zealand. So, yeah, if we can put you up over here, have fun. So, next video should be a more fun interactive video I'll be back out playing I just wanted to put my two pens with in over these issues and um, if you like and are interested like comment subscribe and I'll see you in the next one